Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's Michael D. Groot of Staying Alive UK and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. I'm your host and Social Selling Wednesday is all about discussing issues, topics around social selling and also our favorite platform, LinkedIn. So if you're listening out there, welcome and hello. If you are wishing to come on screen, feel free to do so. It's going to be a pretty lonely place for at least the next 30 minutes or so until I have some other colleagues that are going to join me with a bit of luck. Fingers crossed. Unfortunately, Bob is not very well, so he can't join us today. And Ted actually is on vacation. So well done, Ted. I hope you're having a great time and catching some rays or swimming or whatever you're doing. Um, right, so today I decided to put a few of my own questions up there and I'm just going to share some of my wisdom with you. And if you have some questions, feel free to put them in the question box, send me a message, whatever you'd like to do. And if you're watching this on replay, feel free to reach out to us. You can catch me on at Staying Alive UK on Twitter, which is probably the best way to get hold of me. And, and, and also you'll see the blab somewhere on Twitter or on our websites. And, you know, please do reach out. OK, so the first topic for discussion is the volume of emails that are being sent by LinkedIn. Some of you may remember that LinkedIn got quite a bit of stick for this and that they were going to look at reducing the amount of emails, which in fairness, they have done. And they they have, you know, managed to reduce that. And welcome, Joyce. You're very welcome. I can see your name pop up there. So, um, so coming back to emails, I've been monitoring this. And I've been monitoring how many emails LinkedIn are actually sending me. And the way I did that is I, I basically put a, a filter on my email to say, right, everything that comes in from LinkedIn and it has this title on it, put it in this folder. And I was astounded actually how many I was getting. I must have just been hitting the delete button in previous times. And I'm not even able to catch up with the amount of emails that are coming in. So. I counted that there are around 22 different emails coming in from LinkedIn to all of us, depending on how you've got your settings set. Most of us don't even know that you can change your communication preferences. So if you go into privacy and settings on LinkedIn and then click on communications, you will be able to find on there how you can adjust the amount of emails that you receive from LinkedIn. If you have a big network, potentially you could receive a lot. I mean, the big one we used to get is when people used to up, you know, change job or it was their birthday, there was like this daily email that came in, which actually was quite useful, I felt. That was the most useful email we got, and they stopped it. So uh, in their wisdom, because they wanted to reduce the amount of emails. So let me just mention some of the emails that I'm getting. So I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not looking at the camera. I'm just going to look at my notes. Um, so first of all, we've got messaging email. So if somebody messaged you, you will get an email. I'm actually questioning if we still need this anymore, because the LinkedIn app actually tells you that you've had a message. So if you're using the app on your phone or iPad and you're going in there at least once a day, why do you still need that email coming in? So I might be, probably will be switching mine off. The other one is the adding people to a network. You know, so you get the personalized one, which is fantastic. Oh, Bryn. Uh, Bryn, accept. Let me just pause and welcome Bryn. Thank you. Hello. I have no makeup on today, but oh, that's what we want. Yeah, I didn't put any on either. Oh, uh, but you look so handsome. 
<laughs> you're looking gorgeous, Bryn. Oh, always. you're so lovely. Wait, I'm gonna thank you for joining me. That's fantastic. Oh, my pleasure. I knew that we were light on people today, so I thought I'd jump in. Brilliant. I really appreciate it. The subject I'm just talking about, rambling on about, is emails from LinkedIn. And I've been doing like a review of how many emails I'm getting. And I've been monitoring this for the last kind of few weeks. And I've discovered I get different subjects. These are 22 different emails of any different kind coming in. And of course, you can switch this off inside email, inside LinkedIn now in the privacy and settings, but not many people know how to do that. So I was just kind of going through my list of different emails and the I got I just mentioned one, which is the messaging emails. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, do people still need those? Because we've now all got the LinkedIn app. And if we're active on that and looking at that each day, that tells you you've got a message coming in. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the default place for people to go and have a look. So I'm just putting it out there to say, try and reduce the amount of emails you, you're getting. And probably that one, I'm probably going to stop. I, I don't want to get an email to say someone has messaged you. When I'm in the app, I will just have a look at the app and do it there. What do you? What's your view? So uh, that I don't need that. I delete those. So um, I should turn that off. The best email that I get, and I actually have a rule in a folder, are the LinkedIn accepted the accepted invitations. Yeah. So that to me is the most valuable of all the emails that I get. Um, you can go in and see your new connections, although it wasn't there yesterday under connections. We had to kind of go backdoor it. Um, but you can go in and um, and see your new connections. But I like like once a day, maybe every other day, I'm going in, I'm looking at the people that accepted my connections and I'm personalizing emails back out to them, welcoming them to my network. And I, there's no way I can do that randomly throughout the day. So it's really nice to have that all in one place. That's brilliant. I think that's a great suggestion. And I think I, that is actually the most important email of all. <laughs> I if think people, so. Yeah, if people accepting it, um, because then, you know, you can take action with that. Whereas most of the other things you don't have to take action on or it's not a to do thing mm -hmm. you know um obviously if you're getting messages and you need to respond but actually do you need to get an email message to say someone is you know so i've i've noticed there are many emails coming in every time somebody says the other day i don't know if you've noticed this but on the desktop when you are messaging um or in their message in linkedin messenger if you haven't switched off this like when you press return, it sends it straight away. <laughs> then somebody said, every time they do a carriage return, let's call it a return on their keyboard, it sends the message. And I had like six emails come in and it was just one liners because the person had just hit return. Mm -hmm. And every time it sends a new message. So I'm like, oh no, I can't. Why do I get an email for every single one? Well, so that's a really good point. And one thing I like, like I like, um, with like Google alerts, I I can choose. Do I want a Google alert every time or one a day? Yeah. I think it would be nice to have like a summary once a day that from for all those things. So it's one email with all the links to all the things that if you wanted to do that. Yeah. That, that would be a good solution, I think. And that's interesting because they haven't got a once a day in what they what what does happen if somebody sends a message to you within the space of five minutes or something you'll get an email saying you've missed these messages from like say two or three people but in their message preferences you can either do weekly digests or get individual emails mm -hmm. There's very few that say daily. And I think actually a daily summary will be very useful. So we should put that on the recommendation list for LinkedIn. Yeah, and we should. And you know what? I don't even want an email. I would love to come in as a LinkedIn message. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I don't even need it in an email, but I'd love to be able to have that. Um, Yeah. And then actually, interestingly, this would be awesome because of the new inbox. Every week you would get it or every day you would get it and it would all be in one stream. So if you wanted to go back to old ones, it's really easy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's mark that down and. and Okay. Okay. Well, it's, on, it's on record, so we'll, I'll make sure we're back in that. Okay, good. So then there is the, you know, the invitations, obviously. There is the, the regular invitation, the personalized one. Mm-hmm. Then, then there is the one that's, I'm just kind of running through the list of ones that I've found. Your mentions, when people mention you? Yeah, coming to that. Invitation waiting for your response as well. There is an email for that. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, there is the, this person has accepted your invitation group discussions, open profile messages. I turn all my group discussions off except for the one I manage. Yeah, yeah, same here. Messages you've missed or unread, endorsements waiting, and there are a few of those. There's either the endorsements that have been given or ones that you have to add. You know, somebody's endorsed you for something you haven't got and a random new endorsement for something you don't want. Mm-hmm. Um then, yeah, the person commented on your photo, LinkedIn pulse summary, uh, connections in the news email. Um, My goodness. So, somebody commented on your discussion post. Uh, congratulations on your new job thing. Um, you've got news on your top posts this week. So if you're on pulse and somebody's been liking or commenting on your posts, over the past week, you get an email to say somebody's, you know, recommendations we talked about. Oh, proper recommendations, not endorsements, recommendations. And then somebody mentioned you in a comment. And then, yeah, that's about it, I think. So there's like 20 odd different ones. And uh, what I would recommend to people is go to your privacy and settings and review what it is that you really need mm-hmm. because. What happens is when you get email overload, you go, oh, you know something? I can't be bothered. You know, I'm, oh, I just leave it. I leave it. And, I, and in the end, you leave it for so long, you start deleting everything because it's pointless looking at it anymore. You might as well just take action and, and put your settings to a place where you're happy. Yeah, so I'm looking at that now. It's interesting because I haven't spent any time since they switched over to this new. Yeah, the new user interface is. It is very customizable. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so it doesn't have daily. You can switch it to weekly. I love that. I mean, I daily would be great to weekly digest. Um, it, this is actually very nice. I haven't played in this yet. So when you go to your privacy settings, then you want to click on communications, which is the third tab over. That's it. Um, And then there's basic with email frequencies and messages from members, um, group invitations. So you can change all your groups. Would you like to receive? I do invitations and then notifications. What is this one? So would you like to publish update to your network whenever you join a group? That's a new one to me. Yeah. So choose whether we notify your network. Oh, that goes to your newsfeed. Yeah. So it's Bryn Tillman just joined that group. Okay. I got it. I think that's not new, but the fact that you can turn it off is interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is really, everyone really should take some time and go through here for sure. Definitely. Well, it makes sense to do so, doesn't it? And because if if you get overwhelmed, then it just isn't the right way. And actually, I've been a bit, because I've, in order to review how many I was getting, I put everything into a, a folder. You know, I put a rule on and everything was going to the folder. And now I'm finding like I've got 150 messages that I might have looked at, but I haven't done anything with. Mm-hmm. So you I'm, separate out your LinkedIn invitation acceptances. No, but I will be doing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I will be doing. My, that. I have a cadence every single day, 
So every day I add five new people to my prospecting list. Yeah. We go through with an eight stage, which could be anywhere from two to five weeks, depending on how quickly they accept my connection and all the other stuff. Sure. Um, and um, it is all based. So I have two stages and then a connection request. And then it's kind of stuck until they accept my connection request for a while. However, I can engage on activity and other things. Yeah. Um, my, my stage three is always every single day, check your new invitations and customize, semi-customize. I have templates, but then I semi-customize a welcome note to every single person. And it's usually giving them something, either it's a web a free webinar or LinkedIn templates, or it's usually like, I just like to give some good content that can have an impact on their business. Um, and then, you know, if they have any questions, they can reach out. And then by like stage six, I'm asking for phone calls. Yeah, great. Great. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. That's very, very interesting. And the thing is that, you know, it's a trigger in your in your process, isn't it? That acceptance is a trigger to do the next step. Yep. And that's why it's important to separate separate that one out. Yeah. So and I actually fun. have the stages in the CRM. So I can pull up everyone in stage two. And I can pull up everyone in stage three. So I'm able to manage where people are at all times. Brilliant. That's awesome. Okay, so that, that, that's email and messaging and everything else. So the second thing that I wanted to um, briefly mention is the LinkedIn app and the calendar sync. Yeah, and just I should put in the little blog post that we had. Yeah, share it. You can drop it in the link on the screen if you'd like to do that. I'm looking it up right now. So. LinkedIn, actually, I've started researching this because I saw in the app that it says sync your calendar. So I just switched it on, saw what happened. And I then posted this out on LinkedIn. And Rachel, I think it's Kumar, uh, a product kind of manager at LinkedIn, saw my post and reached out to me. And she started a conversation. We connected and she started communicating with me saying, we're trying to get this. Uh, calendar sync with the app correct and she said this is only for people to begin with she said only for people you are not connected to that you've got an appointment with in your calendar right so I said well that's interesting because if I'm going to be having a meeting with somebody in my calendar next week who I haven't met I will have already found them on LinkedIn connected to them they're already a first level connection. So it's pointless for me not to see that person in my calendar. Right. Because they're already going to be first level. Hopefully, uh, we will. Right, have, right. If you they, don't they will know. Yep. They will know me in, because I'm going to see them. So I'm going to research them, connect with them. Right. And they went, oh, OK, got it. We understand. So then they changed it. So Yay. To, yeah, to include first level connections. I love it. So now it, the, they had a few bugs. I couldn't see anything. And then eventually it's and that's why I did the video, because it eventually then allowed me to, you know, see people in my calendar on LinkedIn. And the cute thing is they put this little message on. If you've got a past appointment, let's say you've had an appointment. So the next day a notification comes up in your network notifications that says you had a meeting with such and such reach out to them and share with them how good the meeting was and i thought that was neat that was really really great and I, yeah, that follow-up email is fantastic i follow mm. up. it was really great to meet you yesterday and just you know we as salespeople, we all need to be reminded what to do so i think that's awesome yeah absolutely so did you find the I put it in the link. I put the link in the. Oh, okay. Well, you can actually let me put the video in here. See if that works. No, uh, where would I do that? You know, in the middle screen uh, where our videos are. Yep. Where you can it says drop in any link. So don't worry. Uh, I'm not a host, so I can't do that. Again. Okay, of course you can't. Sorry. No, that's fine. 
Let me see if I can copy your link. I haven't played in, in Blab in a while. Well, it's great to have you back on. Thank you. And I'm only here, unfortunately, till 11 or till, for the next 10, 11 minutes. I was hoping maybe somebody else would be able to jump in. Um, okay, but I'm, so hopefully this link, yeah, there you go. Look at that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> wow. I'm so happy. You're easily pleased. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like tech. I like tech. Oh, brilliant. So there we go. And it pulls in the picture. And wherever you post on, the, if you want to share something from the pulse anywhere else it never pulls in the picture right and here it does so i'm gonna take a screenshot of this because this is really cool <laughs> i know i love it okay so that's the calendar syncing so feel free to click on that article and have a read um this apparently this link will not show up in the recording but the image will still be there so people can look it up and then um Will the link be hyperlinked on the live chat panel? Uh, what? Well, you can click on it now. Yeah, it says recording. It's not. It doesn't hyperlink. Well, it just it gave me a message when I posted that just now. It said it won't. It won't hyperlink in the recording, which is fair enough. You know. Yeah, it might not in the image that we're seeing, but on the right, I think you know where I posted it. Yeah, that might be okay. Still on the post. Yeah. On the post replay, yeah, on the replay. So I think the live chat, those links work. Great. Okay, so um, let me just say out there, thank you to everybody who's joined us and are listening to us live. If you'd like to join and come and ask a question, feel free to click on the seat and join us live on video or feel free to ask your questions in the chat and we'll be very happy to answer them. So the third thing I was going to mention was that I got today when I was inviting somebody the you are your threshold of I don't know responses had to reach a certain limit. Now, this started coming up for quite a few folks in the last few weeks. I just started I saw messages on LinkedIn where people were saying I'm getting this message coming up. And that's really interesting because there are very, very few invites that don't get accepted that I send out. And there's very few people who are, you know, that, yeah, there may be people I'm trying to connect to who I've either met or not met, but they are still there, presumably being reminded to, to accept my connection. And I looked over the past um, month or so, and I haven't actually sent many invites out at all. Interesting. So I think they've turned up the alert on this, I believe. I don't know what you've been finding out there, Bryn. Yeah, so um, I've seen a lot of people getting them. Um, I think it's interesting that if they are turning it up, because I'm going to tell you, here, I'm going to put a link in. Do you know how to unrestrict yourself? No. I'm going to drop that link. You're going to be happy. So um, if you click on that link, it says, I promise I won't be bad anymore, and you can unrestrict your account. So, um, yeah. So here's. Uh, yeah, they said, I've actually reached out to support and said, I'm not actually um, restricted. They confirmed my account is not restricted. Oh, you're uh, just getting the message that you might be. Correct. I'm okay. getting the warning. So but he, that's, a, yeah. that's a really useful link to share with people in any event. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. That's yeah, well, my, my pleasure. So um, my frustration with that is that LinkedIn makes it way too easy to connect with people without personal messages, right? Yes. So... <laughs> You know, I mean, at times I've accidentally, like I'm almost, I send usually back it up with an in-mail. It's like the only time I use in-mails when I accidentally send an invitation without a message. I That's will, right. I'll send an in-mail saying, I'm really sorry. I just sent you an yes. invitation. <laughs> I, I did exactly the same. Yeah. So, 
um, I, I, I find, you know, unless I'm sitting next to the person, I find it very frustrating that LinkedIn allows you to do that, yet they ding you if someone says they don't know you. But if you had had the opportunity to put in why you wanted to connect. So a perfect example is I was really interacting with someone and I actually it was on my social sales link, not my Bryn Tillman, which this is connected to here, my social sales link, Twitter, not my Bryn Tillman Twitter. My face isn't even on the social sales link Twitter. It's my logo. And yeah. so they found me there and I was interacting a ton. And then when I went to LinkedIn, I was on my phone actually at a soccer game. I should have been watching my kids, I know, but I was tweeting, um, you know, and, uh, uh, anyway, so so I went to connect with them and I accidentally hit the connect button without um, connecting. And I got he actually replied to my connection. Who who are you? Because he didn't see social sales like he now saw Bryn Tillman. He didn't know yeah. who he was interacting with. So fortunately, he responded with who the heck are you? I'm like I'm the one you've been talking to on Twitter for the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, great. OK. But most people don't know how to reply on that. And so many times that could turn into an I don't know. If I had put in the message, I'm the one that you, we've been talking on Twitter, love to connect, it would never have been an issue. No. When I look at that, I find that I that LinkedIn is setting us up for failure occasionally. Yeah. You have to really be careful. At every single, every single time you hit a connect button, it should always give you the option to personalize a note. Always. There's no exceptions. And you know they changed this because Kurt Shaver pointed this out to us a few weeks ago. They changed it on the page, which is people who viewed your profile. Uh, so if you click connect, the blue connect button on those, it allows you to personalize it now. Which is uh, great. Which is great. So why don't they have that on the people you may know page? Because that is the biggest page that people will go to, right? Absolutely. And that is the area. At least if someone viewed your profile, they know who you are. The people you may know that you're trying to connect with may not. Yeah. And yeah. so LinkedIn is recommending connect with these people, but they don't give you the eye. It's crazy. I know. Totally, totally mad. So that incongruency is such a basic fundamental process. And it's such a shame that we're having to repeat this to people over and over again. I just went through, I have this, this you know, I know it's an opportunity to start a discussion. I know that, you know, so I'm not suggesting it's the end of the world because it isn't. Right. And you don't have to accept those invitations. <laughs> you can just go ignore, 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 or I, I don't know, I don't know, and they're going to get restricted. But I reach out to people, thank them for the invitation, and ask them. I basically say, I'm curious, you know, why, what inspired you to connect to me? And then I share with them an article within Pulse, which I've written, which is why why you need to personalize your invite. And I, you know, this may help you, or I would be interested to know your opinion That's about this article. I love that. That's what and you're really providing them value for their future connections. And I That's love it. that you do that. So my 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 view is I'd love for LinkedIn to do this properly, but in the meantime, I'm just touching one person at a time to say read this and you know spread the word because we all need to be behaving differently and actually if they have turned up the volume on the you know too many i don't knows then it's absolutely important that people change their behavior in terms of per sending personalized invitations so I don't think anyone, almost anyone, would report as an I don't know. They may ignore you. They may not reply to you. They may not accept your connection request. But I don't think anyone is offended enough to say, I don't know who the heck this person is. Mm. We sent a personal message. And it's actually really hard to even see that now because uh – if you X somebody out, it's like a notification right at the top of the page. You can hardly see it to click on that. 
<laughs> I know. So, so here, frustrating. So this is full circle back to, to emails. You used to be able to search that invite inside your email and see the note they wrote. Yeah. It is no, that note is no longer there. And it also does not show up in the news, in the inbox. And no. I, I think what really needs to happen is that every one of those personal notes, even if it's a generic note, any note that comes over needs to start that communication in the inbox. So you can always go back to that inbox to see what that invitation said. So yeah. today is a perfect example. I accepted a connection request from someone. I went, oh, I didn't read the message. Mm. Like I saw them on, I, I checked out their profile and from their profile, I accepted from the profile. Now I had absolutely no way to go back to see if he'd written any personal message and I forgot. So I sent him a message saying, I'm very happy to be connected here on LinkedIn. If you had sent me a personal message, I truly apologize. I accepted before I read it. If you had a specific question, please let me know. But what a pain in the tush. I could well, I have news for you. Very good news. That message is now saved under the uh, relationship tab on their profile. Oh, that's awesome. When did that happen? A few weeks ago. I missed it. Yeah, you did. Oh. It's on the relationships tab. Well, what go and have a look. You that have go and have a look right now. All right, I'm going to go look at my guy that I... Uh, your guy, see if he's done it, if it's there. I feel silly now. Is it every message or only the personalized ones? No, everyone, even if it says join my network. Okay. So I'm going to go. Oh, my God, you made my day. <laughs> See, two things I've made you happy about. <laughs> so this is really happy, though. Okay. So I don't even have the relationship tab popping up on my. Refresh. I know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go into. Sometimes it's not even in Chrome for a while. I have to go into. Safari, no, it's still not up. First degree, no relationship tab. It'll take, if there's a delay and I don't know why. Oh, wow. All right, well, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I will go back. Eventually it will show up. I'll tell you the other thing, the change and kind of the back door. Until last week, maybe even more than next week, like here, right? I'm clicking through to him again. Hold on one second. Um, you were able to see... Okay, it's there. No, his message is not there for me. It says connected, but there's... Oh, yes, it is. And there was a personal note. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And actually, it's great because it says, I can't join the May 17th, 3 p.m. webinar. Is there another one I can join? So I could... See, that's an important one. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's awesome. You made my day on that. I don't know how I missed that one. That's awesome. The other thing, though, which is a little disappointing, if you go to my network and then connections, you yeah. used to be able to go to new contacts. I know. Okay, and that's gone, right? So I you know. can see your new contacts, but I have a workaround. Okay. So go to your profile and then click view profile as hop down to your connection section and you can click on um, your new connections. Mine is very low down. Yeah, you can actually click on your 500 plus and it'll hop down, it's a little short. Oh yeah, new, yeah. So that's the, back, that's the workaround. Yay, great. So I shared one thing with you. You shared one thing with yeah, me. Yeah, that's awesome. Big success. Yeah, I don't know why they took that away because that was pretty it's valuable. Totally valuable when you have a large network. Totally valuable. And especially as really you want to go in there and tag them. <laughs> you know, we this whole tagging thing is just like, ah, oh, it's such well, a shame. It is. But, yeah, you want to be able to go to those connections and tag them for in one way or another. Okay, you leave it blank, but if there's some people you want to follow up with, then 
yeah, it's part of the process. So, okay, Brent. All right, that's really great. Um, anything else from you that that you've noticed or? Uh, sorry, I'm, um, you're, I'm, I'm on a foos table here trying to balance this. Oh, okay. This is one of the fun things about people links. They have, like, they have this game room they have. It's cute. They do lots oh, of Oh, I love it. Yeah, so I'm leaning on a foos table. Um, I think that's it for major updates that I can think of. I'm so excited about that invitation. That message changes my life, my world. <laughs> oh, good. Because I know you were really upset about that months yeah. ago. And I just totally missed that update. So that's the other thing that I would love LinkedIn to do. They have the ability, it's so easy, is they don't have to do it in an inbox, but they should send everyone a notification every time there's a change on the mm. platform. Mm. Or have one page that's like a forum or a blog post, one page, one link, and that when you are logged into your LinkedIn, like up near your notifications, there's like a, an updates link that goes to that blog post that takes you to all the updates. Yeah. That's so simple. Yeah. Version whatever, and these are the old changes we've made. Version, I mean, there has to be version control by the IT guys, right? They have to have version control. Otherwise, they wouldn't know where Beth they were. Here. Beth is here. Hey, Beth, come on in. Which is great because I have to jump. So I was trying to avoid jumping and leaving you alone. But um, you, now you have Beth, which is wow, so What cool. great timing. It's perfect. Hello. Hello, oh, hello. timing, Beth. Well no, done. No, no. I have to jump. I'm five, six minutes over where I need to be. But I had so much fun. And I can't wait to watch the recording with the two of you. Love you guys. Excellent. Thank you. Bye, Bryn. Bye, Bryn. Hey, hello. Beth. What are we talking about? Oh, some great stuff. Oh. We, we seem to have done a deep dive into LinkedIn. And okay. we, we've been talking about so volume of emails coming in from linkedin and just very briefly because we're doing kind of a recap i suppose um volume volume of emails and the most important email is the acceptance email um and therefore people should have a filter on that email alone put that mm. into a folder so they can have a you know welcome thank you for connecting and whatever put them into the whatever process they have subsequently to that and then also go into the settings in your privacy and settings section within LinkedIn and switch off some emails that you no longer want to receive or reduce the amount of times that you get it. So maybe going from daily away to, you know, weekly um, or something like that. And then, um, so we've got some new people join us. Uh, Linda, welcome. Hello, Room was here, it's gone. Thank you for joining us, although you may have arrived a little bit late, but we're just doing a little <laughs> recap for Beth as well. We talked about the calendar syncing, and you'll see the article in the box, wherever it is, up or below or to the side. I thought they took that away, the ability to put a a link in one of the boxes. No, Did they this, put it back? with Blab. No, this happened a few months ago. Yeah, you can do this now. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And the so we're talking about the calendar sync for the app. And then the other thing we talked about was the I'm starting to get a message on when I want to connect to somebody and I go to the connect button and write my personalized message. I've reached my threshold. I'm nearly at my threshold of I don't ah. know. There's like a little warning. I haven't been restricted yet. So um, so that's fine. And then Bryn shared the, if people do get restricted, she shared a link for that uh, so people can bookmark that. Welcome, Alma, for joining us as well. You're all really, really welcome. Uh, we've got Beth Granger join us as well. Beth, why don't you just briefly introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Beth Granger. I'm a social sales 
and social media strategist and coach and part of have we talked about social sales gps yet on here we mention it go go let's be brave. okay and part of uh uh a group of people who have formed a new a new company called social sales gps where we're getting you on the fast track to using social media as part of your sales process great great thank you for that so um usually when we have people come on we we ask them you know the drill now because you've been on before which is is there something else that you have noticed either in social selling land or linkedin land that you'd like to share or talk about so there is something new uh just this morning so i don't know if um everybody is aware of Pro linkedin profinder so it's this new great newish um way for people to request quotes from people for certain skills that everything from accounting to law to social media. And I've been experimenting with it on both sides of, you know, ask, trying to hire people and the other way around. And um, just this morning, I received a request to quote. And right. what I do, a little secret thing I do is, I mean, it gives the per who the person is. I look them up on LinkedIn first. Sure. So, so this was someone from Sweden, which I thought was very interesting. Why are they looking for somebody here? But maybe there's a story there. Um, but when I went to respond and send a proposal, it now says you have to have a premium account in order to uh, respond to ProFinder requests. So I have a free account. I've been testing that for a while. And so they're looking to to add that as one of the things that only premium accounts can do. So is it so that's new? Okay, great. And and is this um, you've got to have a premium account with LinkedIn or with Profinder? LinkedIn. Okay, so you've got to be premium on LinkedIn. So is there a way for me to share a screen capture? I can show you what the button said. What it said. I'm okay. I'm not sure you uh, can. Okay, and I have to find where I put it anyway. In fact, I just tried to do a link and that's not working. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to name oh, it. Hold on a minute. Blab screen share extension. To screen share, you need to add the Blab screen share extension to Chrome. Ooh. Well, but except for Chrome doesn't really work with Blab well. I always have to use Firefox. Okay, so. That's interesting. In fact, Something new. Yeah, let me see if I can, uh, if I make you, I don't even know how to do this. Go find her. To make me a co-host? Yeah. Where's it gone? It used to be under the name, if you click on the person's name, but they keep moving things around, so I don't know. Oh, I got it. Where was it? Yeah, on the name. And then you get the pop-up okay. pop -up box. You be made host now. Okay, so let's see if this works. Drop any link. So it's not a link, it's a graph. Okay, I've lost you. Where have you gone? Okay, we appear to have many lost Beth. Uh, who was looking to share a link to another site. And I'm, oh, here we go. What's going on? I'm just gonna try something out here. Sorry to- All right, in trying it, I got cut off. <laughs> right, okay. I'm just gonna try and do a screen share, Beth. Can you see this? Whoa. I can. This... Oh, that was <laughs> this cool. This is what did in you Chrome. I, I added this extension. I can't okay. see you, though. Where have you gone? I can see you. So now your screen yeah, is on the top two-thirds. And then on the bottom, there are oh, three there spots. So I see you I on the left spot, me in the middle, and second. an empty one. Kick. Did I get rid of you? I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Hello. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm. I did. There, there is a strange thing occurring with the with the boxes. Um. So let me just try and get rid of a, this different box and see if that works out. No. So okay. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, here's the screen for ProFinder, right? <laughs> So they've added they've added a lot of categories, which is interesting, and they've added a lot of geography. So it started out in California, and then they added just a few categories in New York, and that's when I started. And now it's I don't know if it's open everywhere, but it's much broader. So which, which category did you go in? So I'm in both coaching and marketing. Yeah, it must be under marketing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I know I'm in the UK and I've tried to get in, but I can't at the moment. They're telling me um, that I can't. So let's have a look, see if we can find you, Beth. Okay. And I'll tell you what the, so the message that I got when I tried to reply was. So where do I look for you in coaching? Um, tell yeah. us what you need. Let's coaching. see. Let's see if, um, do, is, do. Educational consulting. Okay. Now, I don't know because it's also geography wise, so I might not show oh, up. Oh, look, there. there's Colleen. Yay. She shows up whenever I look on here. And it's telling me how many connections we have in common. There you are. There I am. Yay. That's great. So, what, what happened this morning was that when I clicked to respond, it said, Beth, continue responding to client requests by starting your free 30-day trial of LinkedIn Premium. Mm. So it's now a premium thing. Now well, it's a premium inside LinkedIn. Correct. So if now, you're already premium, then you'll get, you'll get I, that. I assume. But the thing that's interesting for me, and I'm start, you know, I've started writing a follow-up to my post about ProFinder. So initially, my concern was that it was going to turn into something like Elance or Fiverr, and it was just going to be a race to the bottom because they, they make you put a, a price right there. You haven't even had a conversation to understand what the person needs. So, um, so I've been experimenting with it and with how I respond to people. And um, so I also got my first fake account I know you. T I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So that Great. was interesting. Um, well done. <laughs> so, so I would say it's definitely not a reason to add premium if you don't already, you know, unless your industry is something where this is going to be a perfect fit for you. Do you know yeah. something? Thank you for that, Beth. This, this layout, I believe, is must be the first kind of insight we're getting where LinkedIn are going to be going with the user interface of the future. Because this is just a LinkedIn profile I'm looking at. Yep. And this is how I'd love the new LinkedIn profile, you know, user interface to be. It's showing your post, your experience. It's kind of like the mobile version, but slightly different. I love it. It's nice and big and it's, you know, it's how you would want it to be inside the current LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So if I click on this, what happens? Get free proposals. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get a free proposal from Beth. So those are the services that I'm categorized under. So if I did social media marketing, click continue. And the different ones have different fields. So for instance, one of my clients is in insurance the fields that come up for insurance are different than the ones you're checking right now. Oh, really? Yeah. It's based on the industry. Oh, great. So these are, are these questions you've put in? No, these are the standard ones that they're asking people. And the same thing when I respond, it, it makes me put in a, either a price by, um, by hour or by job pick if I'm available for a free 15 minute phone call. And then there's a field. Hmm. that you can respond back in. Right. So what I actually did, uh, because I'm still experimenting with, with not paying for LinkedIn, is... Really? Yeah. It's because 
what I, I want to be able to truly understand the differences. And when you have the paid, you don't always know. Yeah, that's right. So um, the what I've been doing is because you can figure out who the person is. The person today has, uh, what do they call it, open profile. So I was able to send her an in-mail saying, hey, I got your profiler request. Let's have a phone a conversation. So that'll be interesting to see if I get a response or not. And what what is the, okay, when it says something, oh, enter at least 100 characters. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Sorry, I'm yeah, I'm 108. Okay, mm -hmm. that one. Okay, cool. Now the so, thing is, this this may go to five people. It may not just go to me. Okay. So you may get it. some interesting responses or not. <laughs> okay, got it. I just thought of that. Well, you could have put it in the text that you were testing something, but yeah. Well, I did say Beth test just testing, so yeah. that's okay. Right. What I mean, this is awesome that we've just discovered we can do Wait. screen sharing on here too. <laughs> and what's that chat live thing on the bottom right? That's that's Profinder. I've never seen that. That's in Profinder. Hmm. Uh, it pops up another external window. Okay. I guess that's maybe to talk to the LinkedIn folks. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to try and do stop sharing. So I do, I'm just going to take a screenshot of this because this might be interesting for other people. So i stop sharing. Okay. There's a very weird thing happened on my screen now because you're, you're in two screens at the moment. Okay. I don't know what it's going to look like in the recording, but we'll find out. <laughs> well, probably more like what I see. I see you on the top left, me on the top right, and an empty spot on the bottom. Oh, okay. Well, my screen is all kind of there is there is a box overlapping you. I can only see half your face. There's another <laughs> box at the top that is black, which has got your name in it. So I think something happened, and then my whole screen, all the writing in the text box, has gone tiny, tiny. Well, are so, you in you're in Chrome? Yeah, because it's interesting that there's this Chrome extension now, because I've found that there are things that just don't work in Chrome and I've had to use Firefox. Right. Now I've always used Chrome for this. I, it's not my default browser. So I, but it's, it's only, I only use it for blab. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they told me in the beginning, use this for blab. So that's what I was doing. <laughs> okay, Beth. Well, that's really useful insight on ProFinder. Thank you Thank very you. much. And Thank we you. were able to screen share. So I'd love to see what that looks like in the recording yeah that will be really interesting because now we can do a lot more with a screen share when we're having these blabs as well every yeah year. i'm gonna have to experiment a little later on a just an unplanned one well if you want me if you want me to to be a test pilot happy to support you on that thank you okay no problem so is there anything else? Because we're, re we're really had a long blab today, considering Bob isn't here and Ted isn't here. <laughs> so we've missed you, but we've had fun, guys. <laughs> and I'm so glad it wasn't just guys this time. <laughs> okay. Yay. Fantastic. Um, well, I'll just, you can stay on for, uh, I'm just going to do a closure and um, pause the recording if I can do excellent. that properly. And so thank you all for watching. Our next show will be next week, same time. That's 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. UK, British summer time, and then 5 p.m. Central European time if you're in Europe in the, on the continent and anywhere else you are in the world. So we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Social Selling Wednesday, every week on a Wednesday. Come and join us. And goodbye.